Hello, beautiful souls. So we are on to part two of our Course in Miracles lessons. This is so phenomenal. Um, I must say thank you to everyone who's been present in this experience all the way through and everybody who's newly on board and everybody who's going to be seeing these videos months and years later. We still are all doing this together as we are learning that there is no time and there's no space that separates us. But this is truly us fulfilling our function and our part here to remember our true selves and to remember God and to be at peace so we may help save the world. Hallelujah. So reading part two of the introduction, we are getting into a phase where words are more unnecessary. So I'm grateful to read these initial words of the introduction so we have an idea according to Jesus as to the application of the lessons that are coming forward. Um, but it also can spark more inspiration within us to truly continue to apply, continue to listen, continue to become aware, aware of the lessons that are presenting itself to us in our life so that we may learn them faster and we may reach that place of joy and peace faster so that we truly can help the world faster. <laughs> so we really want to collapse time here and that's what miracles are for. Hallelujah. So on this beautiful sunshiny day, part two, introduction, here we go. Words will mean little now. We use them but as guides on which we do not now depend. For now we seek direct experience of truth alone. The lessons which remain are merely introductions to the times in which we would leave the world of pain and go to enter peace. Now we begin to reach the goal this course has set and find the end towards which our practicing was geared. Perfect. Now we attempt to let the exercise be merely a beginning. For we wait in quiet expectation for our God and Father. He has promised he will take the final step himself. And we are sure his promises are kept. We have come far along the road, and now we wait for him. We will continue spending time with him each morning and at night, as long as makes us happy. We will not consider time a matter of duration now. We use as much as we will need for the result that we desire. Nor will we forget our hourly remembrance in between calling to God when we have need of him as we are tempted to forget our goal. So as I even pause here for a moment, Jesus is saying words now are no longer needed for you guys. That what you are wanting is the direct experience of God himself. So the small words that we are being given in our exercise periods are to turn us inward so we can be still and wait for God to answer our prayer of the heart. And in God answering the direct prayer of our heart is truly the goal of this course. Because the goal of this course is peace. And when God communicates to us and reminds us of what we are, we are filled with the peace of God. For what did we remember yesterday? There is no peace except the peace of God. And so we are allowing ourselves to call upon him and call upon the lesson hourly to remember God in the morning and at night when we wake up and before we go to bed. And also to call upon the lesson and to call upon God at any time of need throughout the day. So those are very, are very specific practical applications for each and every lesson that's to come forward in part two of these lessons. We will continue with a central thought for all the days to come. And we will use that thought to introduce our times of rest and calm our minds at need. Yet we will not content ourselves with simple practicing in the remaining holy instants, which conclude the year that we have given God. We say some simple words of welcome and expect our Father to reveal himself as he has promised. We have called on him and he has promised that his son will not remain unanswered when he calls his name. I call upon God's name and my own for we are one with our Father God. And when we truly want God, we call upon him and he will answer us. So keep calling, 
because God has promised to answer us and he fulfills all of his promises, all of them. So we are here to experience this within ourselves. Now we come to him with but his word upon our minds and hearts. So now we're not coming with our own ideas and words and beliefs, but we're coming with his words upon his heart, upon our heart, knowing that we are his beloved child and calling upon him as his beloved child. He will hear that call and he will answer us. So now do we come to him with but his word upon our minds and hearts? and wait for him to take the step to us that he has told us through his voice he would not fail to take when we invited him. He has not left his son in all his madness, nor betrayed his trust in him. Has not his faithfulness earned him the invitation that he seeks to make us happy? We will offer it, and it will be accepted, so our times with him will now be spent. We say the words of invitation that his voice suggests, then we wait for him to come to us. So that's what these lessons up to come are for now. They are an invitation to God, and then we rest, and then God answers that invitation. So this is going along even with God's law of giving. We are giving to God what we want. God, I want you. I want your peace. Thank you for answering me through your voice. So we speak through the words of the Holy Spirit, which are our lessons that are being given us here. And that is the voice for God, speaking to God so that God can speak to us. We've cleared all the baggage in between. We've cleared all the junk in the middle now. And so literally we're in that space of openness to receive God's voice directly within ourselves, which answers all confusions, takes away all pain, removes all suffering, and restores us back to perfect peace as God intended us to be. This is what faith will bring us, the faith that God has promised that he will answer us. This is his word. Thank you, Father. Now is the time of prophecy fulfilled. Now are all ancient promises upheld and fully kept. No step remains for time to separate from its accomplishment. For now we cannot fail. Sit silently and wait upon your father. He has willed to come to you when you have recognized it is your will he do so. And you could have never come this far unless you saw, however dimly, that it is your will. Indeed, it is our will that our Father communicate with us directly for we are his children. This is his will that he has constant communication with us. And in listening to God, we're no longer listening to the ego because the ego is seen as the illusory, th illusory thought system that it is. God is the only reality. Hmm. I am so close to you, you cannot fail. Father, we give these holy times to you in gratitude to him who taught us how to leave the world of sorrow in exchange for its replacement given us by you. We look not backwards now. We look ahead and fix our eyes upon the journey's end. Accept these little gifts of thanks from us, as through Christ's vision we behold a world beyond the one we made and take that world to be the full replacement of our own. Yes, yes, we are to focus our mind on the goal. The goal is peace. The goal is peace for all the world. And in focusing our minds on this goal, so do we accept the gifts of thanks that we are giving to ourselves and to our Father God, that we are to accept the world of heaven in replace of the world we made. Yes, thank you. And now we wait in silence. Unafraid 
and certain of your coming. We have sought to find our way by following the guide you sent to us. We did not know the way, but you did not forget us. And we know that you will not forget us now. We ask for that your ancient promises be kept, which are your will to keep. We will with you in asking this. The Father and the Son, whose holy will created all that is, can fail in nothing. I'm even going to read that again. The Father and the Son, whose holy will created all that is, can fail in nothing. We are being reminded that it is the joint will of ours with God's that created this whole world to begin with. Our power together is limitless. It is infinite and it can fail in nothing. And since our joint will with God is to remember that we have a joint will with God and to remember him and to remember ourselves as his son, we cannot fail in asking to remember this and God give us this experience of remembrance because of our asking. So we're realizing that this is what we want. In this certainty, we undertake these last few steps to you and rest in confidence upon your love, which will not fail the son who calls to him. And so we start upon the final part of this one whole year, which we have spent together in the search for truth and God, who is its one creator. We have found the way he chose for us and made the choice to follow it as he would have us go. His hand is held up to us. No, his hand has held us up. <laughs> his hand has held us up. His thoughts have lit the darkness of our minds. His love has called us to unceasingly since time began. We had a wish that God would fail to have the son whom he created for himself. We wanted God to change himself and be what we would make of him. And we believed that our insane desires were the truth. Now we are glad that this is all undone and we no longer think illusions are true. The memory of God is shimmering across the wide horizons of our mind. A moment more, and it will rise again. A moment more, and we who are God's son are safely home where he would have us be. What a beautiful reminder this is for us today, that we made a wish to make God into something that he is not. We had a wish to experience what it would be like to be separate from God and from each other. God granted us that wish because he loves us so much. That wish has been now replicated here in this world of earth. And this earth shows the effect of the thought of separation and all of the pain and sorrow and death and fear that is accumulated here. But we are also just as grateful for the recognition that all of this is illusions and we no longer need believe in illusions anymore and we no longer want that wish to be separate from our father because we realize how crazy and insane that wish really is now that we've experienced it. We as children of God didn't know any better, just like our own little children here on earth don't know any better. We wouldn't persecute our children or blame our children or condemn our children for a mistake they made. Neither does God. And so in this, so are we letting the memory of God shine across our mind that we continue to rise up and enter into the safety of our home in heaven with him and with each other where we are all one at peace and in joy. And in this place of recognition, now is the need for practice 
almost done. For in this final section, it's the final section. Huh. In this final section, we will come to understand that we need only call to God and all temptation disappears. In this section, we realize all we need do is call upon God and temptation disappears. Instead of words, we need but feel his love. Instead of prayer, we need but call his name. Instead of judging, we need but be still and let all things be healed. We will accept the way God's plan will end as we received the way it started. Now it is complete. <laughs> this year has brought us to eternity. One further use for words will still retain. From time to time, instructions on a theme of special relevance will intersperse our daily lessons and the periods of wordless, deep experience which should come afterwards. These special thoughts should be reviewed each day, each one of them to be continued till the next is given you. They should be slowly read and thought about a little while, preceding one of the holy and blessed instants in the day. We give the first of these instructions now. And so I'm going to stop this video and pick it up to, to begin the more um, complete instructions that Jesus is mentioning. And they seem to be quite powerful questions that we all may ask ourselves. You know, what is forgiveness? You know, what is sin? What is Jesus? And through these questions, Jesus is reminding us that it will be our focus of reminder through each of the lessons afterwards. So we are going to continue with a lesson each day, but more so to be still and call upon the experience of God's voice answering us directly, but also with the reminder of each question that's given us to truly allow us to see the whole of what all of these things mean according to God, according to the Holy Spirit, instead of according to our own mind that made its own meaning. <laughs> so I'm looking forward to this last section here. I'm feeling so much joy with reading them and I look forward to being present with all of you with them. So I love you, many blessings. Let's enjoy our last part. Woohoo! I love you all, bye.